Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a while um, and last time or in my last video where I actually spoke to you I said that I was going to Costa Rica for a month and I'm back now and I thought I would maybe explain a bit what it was I did over there and maybe like the pros and cons of my trip like what was good about it what was bad bad if it was anything um and yeah so this is gonna be more of a chatty video um and i've got my laptop here for notes just in case i forget anything or well so i don't forget anything i probably will still but yeah we'll take that as it comes so first of all a month ago wow that's so long ago yeah so i flew to san jose in costa rica where in the airport there was like okay that's not important why am i talking about that first two days in san jose in like this little hotel there were about 10 others and so we just got to meet them a lot of them were dutch and swedish yeah i think it was just dutch and swedish we were by the pool we had cocktails happy hour just chilled then we went to the city mall because some of them needed a sim card um, so those days were very chill, like we were all just getting to know each other, everyone was so sweet, it was so lovely. And then on the third day, that's when we took a bus from where we stayed to Santa Teresa. Now Santa Teresa was the first place, it's like this beachy, it's quite touristy over there, and but it's like a beach surf type of place, party place. And we stayed in a camp and I think that's when we met like the rest of the group properly. We were about 30 in the beginning, which may seem like a lot of people and it was, but at the same time it really was not. But we'll get back to that after. So yeah, the first week it, I had Spanish lessons, I did yoga, the others did surf. We could choose between the two, some people did both. And then, yeah, then it was just a lot of free time, hanging out, exploring the place, eating, eating lots of rice and beans. And then the second week, it was the same yoga, surf, Spanish lessons, but then also volunteering, where we'd have like beach cleanups and like composting, recycling, that kind of stuff. <laughs> And then we also had like a hike each week and then the rest was just free time. We had so much free time, which was great. So we could do whatever we wanted to. Now, after those two weeks, our group got split in half. So about 15 people, they went off to the next de destinations while we stayed there in Santa Teresa for another four days. And those days were completely free. So we rented surfboards, went to the beach, um, did our own hikes, that sort of stuff, just hung out. And then we took a bus to Sirenas. I think we were 15, no, 14 in our group. And those people, we got very close because obviously, like, you're not a lot of people whatsoever. It was really nice getting to know them and our group was pretty great, I won't lie. <laughs> but you also, okay, no, Maria, going off subject. So then we went to Sirenas which is about 40 minute drive, but then we had to walk along the beach for an hour to get there because it's in the middle of nowhere. When there's high tide, you can't drive on the beach. So we had to walk. Yeah, it's quite isolated. It's in the jungle. It's like nearly, I want to say like an animal sanctuary type place maybe, but that's where we did the turtle volunteering. But it was, there was so much free time. like. We would get up at five in the morning, go on turtle patrol, blah, blah, turtle patrol, and then have breakfast. Then maybe we'd have some volunteering. Yeah, something. No, or we'd have like other stuff where, that was really interesting actually. It's really hard to describe. We would sit around in a circle. I don't know how to describe this. Oh, it was very, it was very cool. It was very interesting as well. That's honestly, I really don't, I'm sorry. I don't know how to describe it. It was like, we all sat in a group and then, oh yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna say you get what I mean. You have no idea what I mean. Cause that was like no information whatsoever. 
Moving on. After lunch, then sometimes we'd have like more beach cleanups or we would like clean the turtle place. Very cool. And then free time, dinner. And actually, while we were there, our group got sick. 12 out of 14 people got sick. So for like those four days, there was always someone who was sick and it was like, we were all coughing. I mean, I sounded like a frog. I had the worst cough. I sounded like a frog. It was really embarrassing. Like, cause my voice, even some of the people told me, cause my voice is not, like it's, it sounds quite feminine, but that cough, it was so deep and like, I don't know what, and they, like, the first time I coughed in front of them, one of them was like, what the fuck was that? Oh, sorry, I can't swear. But they were like, what was that? It was me. <clears throat> yeah. So that was not, that was not fun. And then when I thought I finally got better, I went on a hike with someone. Then the day after I was in bed because obviously that was too, too hard on my body and I should not have gone on an hour and a half. It wasn't a hike, it was a walk along the beach, but that was too intense and that was a mistake and I should not have done that. But after those four days, we went to Monte Verde. Now that's where it's like very active. So luckily we had all, I think we had all, yeah, pretty much recovered by then. Like maybe we'd have a bit of a cough, but we weren't tired. Like we had our energy back, we were ready. So much free time again but we'd go either on a morning hike, we'd go see the hanging bridges. I did jump, jump, bungee jump, zip lining, Tarzan swing, went to, oh yeah. Like during the whole trip, we always went to see the sunset and the sunset was so beautiful. And we also saw the sunrise a few times, but the sunset was something else. Like usually, I re honestly, I really like the sunrise in France, it's beautiful. But I think over there it's the sunset that like takes it away because the sun got, gets up in the on the wrong side. That's pretty much my trip for you. And it was pretty, it was pretty good. Now let's move on to the pros and cons. I'm gonna say this straight up from the beginning. I didn't want, well, I was very sad to come home. So like when I'm talking about the negative points, are they, like they don't really count, but I just thought like, I should give you a little, I mean, you need to hear the good and the bad if you're considering taking a trip also. And I did this very quickly, so there may be points missing. But it's like the main points, what stood out, the first things I thought of. So let's start with the negative points. <clears throat> so the first one is that because we stayed in the first location, Santa Teresa, for a long time. Well, it was two and a half weeks. Honestly, I would have preferred to maybe have like one week there and then one week someplace else you know, so we could also have explored a different place. Um, and on top of that, it was also quite expensive. Well, that's that's my own fault. I did no research before going. And apparently Costa Rica is quite expensive some places. Some places. Monteverde was better, but Santa Teresa, like I said, it was quite touristy. So it's expensive. Well, well, I don't know. No, it was, it was more expensive than I thought it would be. But again, I did no research, so you may be aware, just look it up before you choose to go someplace. But yeah, no, so it would have been nice if we would have been able to see like a different location as well and explored even more. Um, but that's also my own fault because it did say, cause I, I found the program and it says in the program exactly what you're going to do. So I chose that. So again, it's, it's, it's my fault. Then the other negative, that's also my fault. All of these are basically my fault. If you plan to go traveling, you may want to not have any plans afterwards because there's a very big chance that you're going to meet some people who you want to travel with afterwards or you just want to keep traveling by yourself or there's more places you want to see. And I couldn't do that because I had already made plans at home. So I had to come back and I couldn't keep traveling. So that's just something to remember. I don't even know why I put this in here. Okay, so I have a, because I don't know if we got sick because of the dust. So I put the dust with something negative. That's part of the environment. So honestly, let, let's, let's cut that one out and pretend I didn't write that. You know what, I'm gonna delete it right now because Maria, why? So those were like the main, like really what I could think of. Maybe, 
Maybe also because it's so far away, but I mean, you want to go far away, don't you? Or, I don't know. Yeah, you do. If you... Yeah, I think so. So let's move on to the positive points. One, it was pretty much the best trip. It was the best trip I've ever been on. Why? One, you get to meet new people and not just, I mean, even if you choose to do a, go to a camp, you'll meet, you'll get very close to the people that who you're staying with, but then you also meet people outside of that. The good, there's a good thing about the camp is that you feel safe. Like, you know, you have a place to stay in. Whereas if you're traveling, like going from hostel to hostel, that may be a bit riskier, but that's also something you may want to experience and also this is another pro, you feel so much more independent and you have to learn how to deal with like finding a hostel if you're not booking it before. I mean, there were people over there who were booking it like a week before or they were like sitting at a cafe just like trying to find something. You meet so many people, a lot of very nice people, a lot of interesting people, a lot of different people. So another good thing, I traveled alone. Now this is personal preference. A lot, well, a lot. There were a few people who traveled together. Now me, I wouldn't want to just because I would feel kind of responsible for always having to be with that person or like I wouldn't just be able to leave them and go do my own thing. And I don't know, maybe it would hold, hold me back from meeting other people. Personally, traveling by myself, the best decision best decision but it, like if you then choose to go on afterwards then once you've been there alone for a bit it would be probably fun to then meet up with a friend after that but it would also be fun to keep traveling by yourself so that's just something to keep in mind depends how you are as a person as well if you like being on your own or meeting new people if you're very outgoing if you're like a bit maybe i mean it is it can be terrifying to travel so if you just feel more comfortable being with someone else then just make sure it's the right person like someone who likes doing what you like doing so let's say if you're very adventurous make sure they are too and not just someone who wants to be on the beach for the whole trip you know so make sure it's the right person just discovering the place like the people there are so different. Their motto is Pura Vida, like pure life, I think. Yeah, I guess. And they were so chill, laid back. Okay, that could also be seen as like a negative point because on the last day when everyone had to go, we had to get shuttles, cabs, to go to different places, to the airport. You know, they were very like Pura Vida, like we're 13 minutes late, put over your and some of them were like, I've got a plane to catch, please get your asses over here. So that's just something, like, that was very fascinating. Obviously it's gonna be different to wherever you go, but it was just so fascinating seeing that's how they live and that's how they see life as well. Like, pura vida, you use that for anything. You can say, hola, pura vida, thank you, pura vida. You know, just pura vida for everything. And then another pro, it was warm, I feel... Okay, I am pale compared to the other people over there. Like, I did not burn once, and I feel like I didn't even tan. But I feel like now that I'm back in the French light, I do feel more tan. So, I also went during the dry season, which also I didn't know because I didn't do any research. Apparently February and March are the warmest months there, so... <laughs> But that was something else very fascinating, like Santa Teresa and Sirenas, it was so hot. Just walk around in a bikini type of warm, stay by the pool. And then we went to Monteverde, it was cold. Long trousers, I did not bring enough long sleeves. I was freezing, I'm a cold person, I always have cold hands, cold feet. Me to keep warm, mm. I was not prepared for that, but that was... <laughs> My fault. Yeah, that's pretty much, that was my trip. That trip was the best thing that ever happened to me. As I said in the beginning, I didn't want to come back. I mean, it was just very nice being on my own, like exploring a place by myself, finding my own way around. I didn't like, I didn't feel homesick, luckily. Um, I didn't, I don't know, I just really, 
enjoyed it. I had time to be by myself, but most of the time I wanted to be with other people. I would be that annoying person who would go find people and I'd be like, do you want to hang out? Honestly, best trip. I highly recommend taking a trip in your gap year. If you're thinking of it, do it. Maybe just my only advice, if you get anything out of this, it would probably be helpful if you just do a bit of research before going. I didn't have any problems, like problems, um, but it probably would have been helpful to have a little more information. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I will probably see you in my next video. And yeah, stay safe everyone. Bye.